Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu atiullah wa atiur rasul wa ulul amri minkum fa in tanazatum fi shay'in farudduhu ila allah war rasul bismillahir rahmanir rahim rabb ishrah li sadri وَيَسِّرْ لِي أَمْرِي وَحَلُوا الْأُغْدَةً مِّنْ لِسَانِي يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي Respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters, I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace, mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God be on all of you. The topic of today's talk is, Authority and Importance of Hadith The glorious Quran is the last and final revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which was revealed to the last and final messenger Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. We Muslims believe that the glorious Quran is the verbatim word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You will not find any Muslim disputing about the Quran as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the glorious Quran in Surah Al-Hijr, chapter 15, verse number 9, that inna nahnu nazzalna zikra wa inna lahul hafizun. That it is we who have sent down the revelation and it is we who will guard it from corruption. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken the responsibility upon himself to guard the Quran from corruption. No wonder one of the staunchest critics of Islam, Sir William Muir, he said 200 years ago that the Holy Quran is the only religious book which has maintained its purity since 1200 years. He said this 200 years ago. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised in the Quran that he will guard the Quran from corruption. So you will not find any Muslim disputing about the authenticity of the Quran. But the problem arises when it comes to the Hadith. And there is a group in our midst which refer themselves as the Ahl Quran in inverted commas and they call themselves as the Ahl Quran that people who follow the Quran I will request my brothers and sisters to please do not call these people as Ahl Quran because had they followed the Quran they would have surely believed in the authenticity of the Hadith because the Quran mentions in so many places that we have to follow Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so do not call these people as the Ahl Quran, but call them as Munkarin Hadith, as Inkar Sunnah, that is people who reject the Sunnah, that people who reject the Hadith. These people, I have met these people, and these are the people who really inspired me to give this speech on the authority and importance of Hadith. And there are also groups in these people. Some of them, they reject the hadith altogether. They don't believe in a single hadith. Some of them, they accept some hadith which conciliate with their logic or with their understanding or with their reasoning and the other hadith which contradict their understanding and their logic and their reasoning, they reject those hadith completely. Now before we delve into the subject more deeply, let us first understand the meaning of the word sunnah. Sunnah means the way. It is not your way or my way or the way of any Joe and Mo, but it is the way shown by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. It is the way of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And there are various types of sunnah. And people generally believe that sunnah is something which is optional. You know, if you do, you get plus points. And if you don't do, you will not get any negative points. However, 
there is also sunnah which is wajib which is obligatory upon us which is compulsory on us to follow for example our nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said in the hadith of sahih al bukhari volume number 1 hadith number 604 he said sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli let pray as you have seen me praying so it is obligatory upon each and every muslim to pray how our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he prayed the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he prayed four rakat zuhur we cannot say that we will pray only two so we have no option in that it is wajib for us to follow our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when it comes to worship when it comes to ibadah so sunnah is not something which is optional but there is also sunnah which is wajib there are some sunna which are only khas for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam only specifically for the prophet for example the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he always used to pray tahajjud it was compulsory on the prophet to pray tahajjud he must pray tahajjud every night but on the muslim umma it is not compulsory it is mustahab it is highly encouraged it is recommended but it is not obligatory upon the muslim umma to pray tahajjud every night if the prophet marries a woman and if he had jima that is sexual intercourse even once with that woman then she becomes the ummul mu'minin that is mother of the believers and after the demise of the prophet no muslim can propose her and she cannot remarry because she becomes the mother of the believers but our wives if we die then that woman is allowed to remarry and any muslim can propose her after the demise of her previous husband there is also sunna ibada now how the prophet prayed there is also sunna ada the prophet used to dress like the arabs it was not compulsory on the muslim to dress like the arabs the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he used to travel on the camel it is not compulsory or even mustahab on the muslims to travel on the camel so these are different types of sunna now coming to the hadith what is the meaning of the word hadith hadith means a saying a conversation if you read the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah 2 chapter 52 verse number 34 fal yatu bi hadithi mislihi in kanu sadiqin then let them produce a saying a hadith like unto the quran if they are speaking the truth in kanu sadiqin if these people are truthful then let them produce a saying or a hadith like unto the quran so the word hadith is mentioned in the quran so literally the word hadith means a saying or a conversation but in islamic sharia hadith means saying actions as well as the approvals of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and hadith is classified into three main categories number 1 is hadith e qauli that is the sayings of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam number 2 is hadith e fa'li which is the amal the actions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the third is hadith e taqreeri which is the approval of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam now let us see one by one the examples of these three types of hadith first is hadith e qauli as i quoted to you the previous hadith from sahih al bukhari volume number 1 hadith number 604 in which our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli let pray as you have seen me praying so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is commanding in this hadith that you have to pray as the prophet prayed sallallahu alaihi wasallam another example is from sahih muslim volume number 1 hadith number 79 our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that man ra'a minkum munkaran that if you see any wrong any evil then first correct it with your hand if you cannot do that if you do not have the strength to do that then correct it with your mouth even if you can't do that then at least curse in your heart and that is the least of faith so this is another example of hadith e qauli which is the saying of our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam now there is another category which is hadith e taqreeri that is the approval of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam It is mentioned in Sunan Abu Daud, Hadith number one thousand two hundred and sixty-two. Qais ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, he relates that I went to the dawn prayer, that is the Fajr prayer, and I found the Prophet praying Fajr. 
So Kaiz, he immediately and straight away joined the Prophet in the first Salah and he did not pray the two Raka Sunnah which he was supposed to pray before the first Salah. After the first Salah, Kaiz ibn Umar, may Allah you please with him, he stood up and he started praying two Raka Sunnah which he missed which he was supposed to pray before the first Salah. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he passed by and he saw Kaiz praying two Raka Sunnah and he inquired. And Kaiz then informed him about all that happened. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he kept quiet and he did not say anything and he went away. So this proves that one can pray his Sunnah prayer even after the first Salah if he had missed the Sunnah, the two Raka Sunnah before the first Salah. So this is the example of the approval of the Prophet that is hadith taqriri Now let us analyze some points which give evidence about the authority and importance of hadith. A hadith are hujja and authority over us. I read to you a verse in the beginning of my talk from Surah Nisa, chapter number 4. Verse number 59, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, that O you who believe, ati'u Allah wa ati'u Rasul, obey Allah and obey the messenger, wa ulul amri minkum, and those who are charged in authority over you, fa in tanaza'atum fi shayin fa rudduhu ila Allah wa Rasul, and if you differ among yourselves, if you have any dispute, then refer it back to Allah and his messenger. If you should believe in Allah and the last day, and that is the best in result. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse that, O you who believe, Ati'ullah wa Ati'ur Rasul. Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. The Arabic verb Ati'u, which means to obey, it is only used for Allah and His Messenger. And it is not used for those who are charged in authority over you, that is Ulul Amr Minkum. So this establishes Allah's Messenger as an independent object of obedience. And obedience to anybody else is upon consistency with the Quran and the Sunnah. Besides this, when Allah says that if you have any dispute among yourselves, if you differ among yourselves, then again you have to refer back to Allah and His Messenger. And again there is no mention of Ulul Amri Minkum, that is those who are charged in authority over you. Furthermore, Allah says obey Allah and obey the Messenger. Obey Allah means the Quran and obey the Messenger means the Sunnah, the Hadith. And between them there is the Arabic word wa, that means and. So obey Allah and obey the messenger are two different things. And many people wrongly assume that obedience to Allah and obedience to the messenger is the same. And these are not two different things. But there the Arabic word wa is used which signifies that obeying Allah and obey the messenger, these are two different things. Furthermore, Allah did not say Ati'ullah summa ati'ur rasul, which means obey Allah and then obey the messenger. But Allah says Ati'ullah wa ati'ur rasul, that is obey Allah and obey the messenger. Many people they say that obedience to the messenger was only incumbent on the Sahaba, that is the companions of the Prophet Because they were present at that time and we were not there at the time of the Prophet, so it is not compulsory it is not incumbent upon the Muslims the obedience of the Prophet. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He begins the verse by saying, Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu, that O oh, you who believe, any person who believes in Allah and the Messenger, this instruction is for the whole of Muslim Ummah. Because all the Muslims, they believe in Allah and the Messenger. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further mentions, in Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 32, Allah says, Qul, tell them. Allah is asking His Messenger to tell these people who follow you. What He is asking? Allah says, Qul, Ati Allah wa Ati Rasul. Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. For in Tawallahu, but if they turn back, these people, if they turn back, for in Allah la yuhibbul kafirin, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like, does not love the disbelievers. So if you don't obey Allah and His Messenger, Allah says, you are turning as though disbelievers. Further Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Muhammad, chapter 47, verse number 33, 
Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheen amanu, O you who believe, Atiyu Allah wa atiyu Rasul, wa la tubtilu amalakum. That O you who believe, obey Allah and obey the Messenger, and do not invalidate your deeds. If you are praying, if you are fasting, if you are giving charity, if you are going for Hajj, and if you are not obeying the Messenger, then you are invalidating your deeds. Moreover, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Nisa chapter number 4 verse number 80, Allah says, مَنْ يُتَيْرْ رَسُولَ فَقَدْ عَطَى Allah." That he who obeys the Messenger has actually obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What Allah is saying, مَنْ يُتَيْرْ رَسُولَ فَقَدْ عَطَى Allah." That whoever obeys the Messenger, he has actually obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the hadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Sahih Muslim volume number 3, hadith number 4518, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that whoever obeys me has obeyed Allah and whoever disobeys me has actually disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's another hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, volume number 9, hadith number 384. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, that all my followers, all the Muslims will enter paradise except those who refuse. And the companions of the Prophet, they asked that, Oh Rasulullah, who are the ones who will refuse? So the Prophet ﷺ, he replied, he said, Anyone who obeys me will enter paradise and anyone who disobeys me is the one who refuses to enter paradise. So whoever obeys the messenger is actually obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Najm, chapter 53, verse number 3 to 5, وَمَا يَنْتِقُوا عَنِ الْحَوَىٰ That he does not speak from his own desire. إِنْ هُوَىٰ إِلَّا وَحْيُوْ يُوْهَىٰ It is no less than an inspiration sent down to him. أَلَّمَهُ شَدِّدُ الْقُوَىٰ He is taught by one mighty in power. So whatever the Prophet is commanding you, it is actually under the inspiration and guidance provided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whoever obeys the messenger is actually obeying Allah. The glorious Quran, though has its own grade, and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says in Hadith of Tirmizi, Hadith number 1003, he says, whoever recites a single letter of the Quran, he will get 10 blessings. And he says further, that Alif, Lam, Mim is not a single letter, it's not one letter. But Alif is one letter, Lam is one letter, and Mim is one letter. So if you recite Alif, Lam, Mim, you will get 10, 10, 10, 30 sawabs, 30 blessings. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hashr, chapter 59, verse number 21, لَوْ أَنزَلْنَا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَىٰ جَبَلِلْ لَرَأَيْتَهُ خَاشِئًا مُتَصَدِّئًا مِّنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ That had we revealed the Qur'an on the mountain, it would have humbled itself and it would have been broken down by the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also challenges in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse number 23-24, that وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا That if you are in doubt to what we have revealed from time to time to our servant, to the Prophet, فَأَتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِّن مِّسْلِهِ Then produce a surah, a chapter, somewhat similar to it. This is the challenge, an open challenge of the Qur'an. وَدُعُوا شُهَدَاءُكُمْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ And call your helpers and witnesses if there are anyone besides Allah if you are speaking the truth. فَإِلَّمْ تَفْعَلُوا But if you cannot. وَلَنْ تَفْعَلُوا And for a surety you cannot. فَاتَّقُوا النَّارَ الَّتِي وَقُودُهَا النَّاسَ وَالْحِجَارَةِ Then prepare for the fire whose fuel is men and stones. وَإِدَّتْ لِلْكَافِرِينَ Which is prepared for those who reject faith. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala challenges the mushriks, the non-Muslims, to produce a surah somewhat similar to it. So the Quran has its own grade and it has its own status. However, when the matter comes to the obedience, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not differentiated between the Quran and the Hadith, between Him and the Messenger of Allah. There are many people who say that we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the maximum. We love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, how we are supposed to express our love towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Did Allah tell anything in the Quran that how you can express your love to Him? Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 31. Allah is instructing His Prophet and saying, Qul, tell these Muslims, O Prophet, in kuntum tuhibboon Allah, that if they really love Allah, fattabi'uni yuhibbukum Allah, then follow me, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you. 
So you have to follow the messenger in order to gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you your sins. وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ rahim And Allah is of forgiving, most merciful. Now the most important point to note here is that there is not a single place in the whole Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders obedience to himself and he does not order obedience to the messenger. Let me state to you emphatically again, there is not a single place in the whole Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders obedience to himself alone without explicitly mentioning obedience to the messenger. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not warn disobedience to himself without explicitly mentioning the disobedience to the messenger. So this shows the importance and authority of sunnah over us. However, on the other hand, one can find verses in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders obedience to the messenger alone without mentioning the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can you imagine? Amazing situation. There is not a single place where Allah orders obedience to himself without explicitly mentioning the obedience to the messenger. However, there are verses in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders obedience to the messenger without mentioning the obedience to himself. And Allah says in Surah Nur, Chapter number 24, verse number 56. Wa aqimu salah, wa atu zakah, wa ati ur rasul. That establish prayer, give charity, and obey the messenger. Can you imagine? Allah is only ordering obedience to the messenger here, and He has not mentioned obedience to Himself. So this shows the authority and importance of Sunnah in Islam which makes sunnah as the unavoidable source of our deen, that is Islam. And there are so many places in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders obedience to Allah as well as the messenger. That is, ati Allah wa ati rasul. Ati Allah wa ati rasul. Allah says in Surah Nisa chapter number 4, verse number 14. In Surah Nisa chapter number 4, verse number 69. In Surah Maida chapter number 5, verse number 92. In Surah Anfal, chapter number 8, verse number 46. In Surah Anfal, chapter number 8, verse number 20. In Surah Anfal, chapter number 8, verse number 24. In Surah No, chapter 24, verse number 47. In Surah No, chapter 24, verse number 52. In Surah No, chapter 24, verse number 54. In Surah Ahzab, chapter 33, verse number 71. In Surah Ahzab, chapter 33, verse number 66. As well as in Surah Hujrah, chapter number 49, verse number 14, Allah says, Ati Allah wa Ati Rasul, obey Allah and obey the Messenger. There are no less than 20 places where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders obedience to Allah as well as the Messenger. If there are so many places in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered obedience to Himself as well as the Messenger, then how can we assume and how can we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not preserve the sayings, the actions as well as the approvals of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? If Allah were not to preserve the sayings of the Prophet, then mankind would argue on the Day of Judgment that, O oh Allah, you order us to obey the Messenger, but we did not find the sayings, the actions, the approvals of the Prophet ﷺ. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has emphasized in so many places in the glorious Quran that obey Allah and obey the Messenger. If you do not obey the Messenger, then you will face a grievous penalty. If you do not obey the Messenger, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not love you. So in order to gain the love of Allah, you have to obey the Messenger. And obedience to the Messenger is obedience to Allah. This implies that there can be no real obedience to Allah unless it is done via the Messenger of Allah. Unless it is done through the obedience of Messenger. With this message, I conclude. Wa akhiru dawana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. Jitu salli wa bi qalbi, atadarra shawqan rabbi, fatakabbalni yadal minna warhamni wa firdambi.